Hey everybody, Jay Young here from King Operating. If you will, go to kingoperating.com, our website, and learn more about the oil and gas business. Every Friday I do a newsletter and I do a video that will teach you something about the oil business. And if you want to know something about the oil business, send me a question and I'll go over those on our Friday newsletter. So kingoperating.com, learn more about our business and get involved. The Jay Young Show is a weekly podcast featuring insightful discussions with anyone from big business CEOs, celebrities, to military heroes. Each interview is a personal conversation about business, life, and anything in between. And now, your host, Jay Young. Thanks for coming in today. We're, we're going to interview one of my favorite people. Dr. Brian May wants to go by Brian because he just... He's a lovable guy in Angelo State University in San Angelo, where I went to school, and I'm a 1985 graduate there. I've been on the board with Brian for a long time, and I just he is he has developed such a great culture there. And I'll tell you what, I'm not sure how many students were going there when I was there in 1985 when I graduated. But I tell you what, we're going to talk about the growth, not only okay. about the growth of Angelo State University, but what Dr. May is bringing to the university with his culture and all the people love him and and all that. So thank you very much for being on, Dr. May. Well, I'm glad to be here, Jay, and uh, I, I'm very interested in how we're going to proceed. <laughs> how we're going to make this work? How, how's this going to yeah. help? Yeah. Man, we're going we're gonna to blow Angelo State University up. And I don't know what I could do compared to what you've already done. I mean, you've done an excellent job, you know, in, in coming in. You're the first Angelo State University graduate to be president. Is that right? Right. That's right. That's awesome. That, that, I mean, you got in your blood. Well, I do. Uh, you know, I'm a one-school president, and I tell people that all the time, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't be anywhere but here, and in fact, if I'm not president, I'll just go back to teaching. But uh, <laughs> this is this is the place for me. Best place for you, San Angelo, Texas, and Angelo State University, yeah. and and you did teach there. You've been how long have you been there? I mean, so you graduated. Well, you know, I I started here as a freshman in the fall of '76, and uh, then I uh, I got my bachelor's and my master's degree, and then I went to Texas A&M to uh, work on my PhD, and then upon graduation uh, at A and um, I um, I spent about eight years in the commodity business, uh, primarily with wool and mohair here in Texas and across the country. But I had uh, international offices uh, in Europe and in Asia, and was doing a lot of traveling. And uh, one day I came home, and my oldest daughter had hid my suitcase, and so. I decided then that it was time for me to go back and try to get into Angelo State. And uh, I was living here in San Angelo at the time, and uh, Dr. Vincent was still the president. And I talked to him about it, and uh, just came back here in the in the ag department and uh, got got started and and been here ever since. Wow! Wow! So Dr. Lloyd Lloyd Vincent, yeah, he's the one that had me my degree um, back in '85. Exactly. He was there for years. He was there 25 years, and, wow. you know, and then following him was um, uh, Dr. Heinemann, Jim Heinemann. Right. He was here from like 95 to 2007, so about 12 years. And then Dr. Rollo came in from 2007 to 2012. So I've been president almost uh, seven years. Almost seven years. So was yeah. it? Uh, so Joe Rollo, you know, good friend. He's with Texas Tech System now. I believe he's still with the Texas Tech System. Well, no, he left there and actually became the commissioner of higher education in Louisiana. Oh wow! Uh, but, wow! But and he did that for a few years. But now he's retired, and living here in San Angelo. He and his wife Barbara, of course, a good friend of all you and I. Yeah. And uh, he he's enjoying retirement. Wow. Well, that's great. You know, one of the things that when people talk about San Angelo, you know, it's the it's one of the largest cities. People are like, where is San Angelo? And San Angelo <laughs> State University. No, it's Angelo State University in San Angelo. I've got to correct people all the time. You know, but but you, you did a lot back in the 
uh, around 2008 or nine when you joined Texas Tech. Can you kind of walk me through that? Because you weren't the president at the time, I believe. It was Dr. Rollo. But right. But kind of walk through, and, and what does well, that benefit? How does that benefit Angelo State? You know, when it was uh, Pollyanna Stevens, you know Steve Stevens and his wife Pollyanna. Pollyanna was currently serving on the uh, Board of Regents for the Texas State University system, and, uh, you know, it became apparent to – uh some of us here in town that you know really we would benefit greatly if we could switch systems from the texas state system which was uh which was primarily a loose federation you know you really didn't have a lead uh university to a strong university system and uh, there was several folks looked around and Texas Tech had just started their system and it had the enabling legislation uh, like three or four years before that. And so it's around that 2007 mark and we we approached Drew Darby here in town and uh, Kent Hans was a chancellor of, of, of Texas Tech at the time. And, uh, and in doing so, we, we just decided that we would introduce legislation in Austin. And uh, I worked uh, really close with the uh, Lieutenant Governor at the time and some of the other folks, and as well as Drew Darby. And of course, Bob Duncan, who labored, became the chancellor of the Texas uh, Tech system. He was our state senator, and it just sailed through the, the legislature. And we were able to join them in 2007. and it. It really has been probably the most impactful decision that we had we had made and 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 got culminated since we became a four year institution. Gotcha. And ever how, since then, it's it's been really really good for us. Right. And and how does it benefit students? If I'm gonna get a main, degree from there. Yeah. the 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 thing about it is, we really just share. Uh, Board of Regents. We really don't have any exchange of funds or or resources or infrastructure between Angelo State and Texas Tech. We just really share a Board of Regents. But some of the benefits have been uh, to our students, particularly, especially ones that are in our honors program, is that we have a, uh, an, an admission into medical school that is really helpful to our students that if they if they accomplish a certain score on the MCAT and others they can be automatically admitted into Texas Tech Medical School without an interview and we've already had several who have done that and it's been really really helpful we the the other major benefits of being in the system uh, is the whole uh, representation we have both in Austin and in Washington and that's been a huge help to all of us and uh, it's helped Angelo State and in, and in turn benefiting the students in that regard. I got you. So those are the two biggest uh, uh, benefits that I could talk about right now. Okay. But uh, we do have a guy as you well know uh, graduate from Angelo State on the Board of Regents and uh, Mickey Long and he, he was chair twice of the Board of Regents, served two terms as chair, but he still serves on the Texas Tech Board of Regents, but he's a graduate of Angelo State University. Yeah, I like Mickey. Old man out in Odessa. He's a good yeah, guy. Yes. Good guy. He's a great I guy. I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I need to I need to hook back <laughs> up with him. I'm sure he's at a Texas yeah. Tech oh, yeah. football game, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he'll, he'll gladly host you if you want to go up there, but he is a <laughs> – he has a suite in our press box as well. Good. So, uh, yeah, Mickey, he he's a he he sports Texas Tech, but he's a diehard Ram fan. That's yeah, for sure. I know he is, and he he's really helped out support. I know um, Angelo State football program and and everything that goes along with that, which is awesome. Good. When when Dr. Rollo was president, I remember him saying when me and you were on the board together, he was talking about ten thousand students by two thousand twenty. So can you kind of give me an update? Kind of give me an update. I'm, I'm, I'm cheering 
I'm the biggest cheerleader for Dr. May here. So I'm, I'm, <laughs> how's well, that number working out, or is it working well, out? Well, it, it was it was kind of fortuitous, you know. Actually, that that number was chosen by Ken Hans, who was the chancellor at the time. And he literally just pulled it out of the air, and I, <laughs> I had no, I had we had no numbers to back that up that we could have that kind of growth or the demographics to support that kind of thing or, or anything like that. But having said that, uh, you know we did get luck, and uh, we we pulled together a lot of strategies. We started getting a lot of exposure in a lot of different areas. One is the number of the amount of funds we started raising from private individuals. That was a lot of great exposure. We added new programs like engineering, which hadn't been at this school ever. And that was a, a function of raising private funds to do that. And then we started winning in a lot of academic areas, uh, getting a lot of recognition and also winning at sports. And we were winning in every single sport across the board. And, uh, bringing in conference championships, you know, six, seven, eight conference championships a year. And that, that all that exposure of, of every facet of Angelo State, uh, we started growing. And we started bringing in a lot more freshmen, a lot more transfers. And then we started a strategy of dual credit where we actually delivered dual credit to the high schools in West Texas and uh, that brought in an incredible number of students and uh, and still is and that's growing at a rapid rate and uh it, you know a couple of years ago we reached the 10,000 goal already and so uh it was a, a huge shift in fact we were the fastest growing university percentage wise in the state for the last couple of years wow. and uh, we finally were 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 we're benefiting from that dramatically in our state funding, and it, it's been a it's been a great source of, of extra funding here to carry out even more initiatives as we go along. Right. So, the, so the dual credit is where people can go online when they're in high school and start getting college credits, right? So oh yeah. Can, well, can just go on and actually, <coughs> yeah, it's two different ways. The main the main delivery method is is that. We have masters prepared faculty at the high school themselves, and they they actually deliver our curriculum uh, and are are employed by Angelo State, and uh, so that's that's been a huge benefit to those schools and to those kids attending those schools, and in several of those schools we we actually scholarship the tuition, and we charge a very low rate of tuition to begin with, but. But we scholarship the tuition, and it's been a great resource for those students and those school districts. And I'm constantly hearing from superintendents and school board members about the benefit that they've derived from Angelo State coming into their school district. But we have a lot of students now. In fact, the average uh, student coming into four-year public institutions in Texas uh, they usually average about 30 hours of dual credit, but we have some of them who have as much as 50 or 60 hours. This last wow. spring, this last spring, we had a we had a young lady who graduated in two years and never took summer school. <laughs> oh she, she had 62 hours of dual credit when she came here. Oh my and god! So yeah, it's. And, you know, of course, we've been blessed that we have the, the CAR scholarship program, which now is up to about $150 million in the corpus, uh, you know, from oil and gas royalties. And uh, that's one of the largest scholarship programs for a public university in the country. And so we're really fortunate to have that. And we also announced at the uh, graduation this year that about 65% of the graduating seniors that day at at one time had a car scholarship God, and 65 percent of students had a car scholarship from from the scholarship oil and gas royalty fund that helped them right. pay for college wow that's exactly right 65%. and it was close to 50 percent of them graduated with no debt wow unbelievable that is unbelievable i mean it took me like i don't know how many years it took me to get 30 credits you know, 30, you know, 
Yeah, freshman, well, sophomore, and you know, I took so I I did graduate in four years, but I went to summer yeah. school, and I mean, oh, I yeah. just everything in the world it took, you know, and and now kids are graduated in two years. That's unbelievable. Yes, yes. That scar, Scott, fact, you can go on. Go ahead. We track it now. The we've always tracked the four year graduation rate but we track now the three-year and the two-year graduation <laughs> rate too God. and every year they it goes up the number of kids that are doing that wow and so really uh it's a great opportunity for a lot of those kids because they, they they're usually high achievers and they can get a, a car scholarship to go to graduate school so we have a lot of them getting their uh, master's degree before they leave here and, uh, and it's almost at no cost wow that's awesome that is great. I mean, that, that is something that, that a lot of colleges don't have. I mean, number one, it's not that expensive. If you went, if I didn't have a scholarship and I'm an in-state student, I live in Dallas, Fort Worth area, and I said, man, this San Angelo sounds pretty good. Dr. May sounds like an incredible and genius, and, and uh, I, I want to go to Angelo State. About what's the tuition per year? If I, need, I mean, room and board, across the board, how much would it be per year? For the first well, year. if you if you count everything, you know, and I and the reason I know the number is because that's what we have to pay for a full ride for athletic scholarships. If you had to pay for everything, and it's about, and that means room, board, tuition, fees, books, everything. It's about seventeen thousand dollars a year. Wow! Wow! And there's a lot of car scholarships out there. A lot of car money. There's a lot of other scholarship funds that 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 oh, people yeah. can get. Oh and, yeah, uh, we you know it depends on what major you're in, but uh, a lot of kids you know too come here. They've got some scholarships from back home, but they'll get some departmental scholarships like our agriculture department, which I'm very familiar with. We have a whole host of different. Uh, scholarships you know not only from local but san antonio and houston stock shows and san angelo stock show there there's in fact kids that have money well in excess of the, all their expenses while they're here wow especially if they're local kids and they live at home i mean they they can buy a car or whatever they need to <laughs> to to get through school so there there's a lot of them who do quite well and, and they're actually out nothing uh, in, in the process right and so especially these bright kids that uh, that are you know part of our honors program you know that's another big bump in financial aid because being part of the honors program probably the total amount you know if you think about it is about sixty eight thousand mm-hmm uh, sixty four to sixty eight thousand. That's if you're having to pay for everything. You know, you're not living at home. You're here. You're living in an apartment. Uh, that's what your degree costs. Well, those honors kids get about seventy-eight thousand. Wow. And so, that's you know they have money to put away. And so, that's that's your best and brightest. And you certainly want to try to recruit those kind of kids. We're constantly looking for national merit finalists or national merit scholars too we we go after them really hard we have a except uh, an exceptional scholarship program for them as well right and i mean just to compare that to the bigger tcus smus the bigger schools i mean they're 70 to eighty thousand dollars a year so oh yeah, oh, yeah. i mean if, <laughs> if if we go early if we can get early you know brand some of these kids and and junior senior in high school they can be through in two to three years it's easier and a lot less expensive to get i mean you're spending three hundred four hundred thousand dollars for some of these tcu kids you know to go through the whole thing what you're saying is it's going to be that much for the whole entire four year if somebody goes four years but you're trying to get people obviously this dual credit program where they can come in and have 30, 40, 50 hours before they even start. So they may only go two to three years. Tracking two to three years is amazing. Yeah, and, it, and you know, that that has been going on in Texas for quite some time. And the bulk of that delivery has been from community colleges. And But we're one of the largest, if not the very largest, uh, deliverer of dual credit from a four-year institution. And uh, 
but that's something that you know we're having to work with uh you know and, and look at because when you have students that are graduating and they're 19 20 years old you know you have a whole different set of dynamics there too that you have to continue to work with but uh i can tell you these students are up to the challenge uh, they they're mature beyond their years they're extremely efficient at multitasking uh, and, it, and it proved you know that's been proven out through the computer age and the internet and the iphones and or they they just they're just very very skilled at doing a lot of things at the same time wow and uh much more so than myself but <laughs> but they they they've been very good but probably you know the things that have really helped us the most and where we really expand on here at angelo state is we're we're really really strong in the stem area and especially with our burgeoning engineering program with civil civil and mechanical engineering but also the health professions with nursing our nursing program continues to grow every single year physical therapy grows uh, we have now a new uh, health professions degree and uh, to work with all kinds of health areas and then we're really strong in teacher education uh, and providing teachers and but something that's near and dear to you is our college of business and it really has just blossomed under the leadership of the dean clifton jones and uh, we're approaching that AACSB accreditation but our, our program is growing dramatically we have our mba online now and we're about to announce a uh, single price for the MBA that wow. includes all your your tuition fees, books, and everything. And it's, it's going to be very attractive. That's great. I love Dr. Clifton Jones. I mean, what a great pickup he was a few years ago. Really, oh, yeah. really great. Really great. But it, I, he just shows you, you know, your real strength is in people. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. I, uh, I, I, wanted, I, wanted, I know you're getting ready to leave because you've got a meeting downtown but i want to i want to say you know i went to angelo state university i love the culture back in the 80s but you have taken it to a new level you know with everything that you've done with with the car scholarships with with keeping tuition low with all the people joining the texas tech system i mean somebody can i guess when somebody graduates they could put angelo state university you know and part of the texas tech system so it's just not a Where's Angelo State University, more or less? Is that is that true? Can you oh yeah, and you know, but their their degree is an Angelo State University degree, and uh, you know we do try to create a culture that that we care about people. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of is there's a survey done every single year uh, by the Chronicle of Higher Education, which is more or less the guiding publication for higher ed. And uh, they do a survey about, you know, employee satisfaction, morale, and that kind of thing. And if you, they have 12 criteria. And if you, well, if you get three out of the 12, you're considered a great college to work for, which is kind of a low bar, but it's actually, it's, it's pretty hard to attain. Uh, the first year we did it, uh, after I became president, we got nine out of 12. <laughs> Wow. And then wow. ever since then, it's been 11 out of 12. And this year, we got 12 out of 12. That is great. So, uh, but we're the only public institution in Texas that has that distinction as wow. a great college to work for and being on what they call the honor roll wow. of that survey. So people like it here. And we, and we have that slogan, Ram Fam, but it's not a slogan, it's a culture. Right. We care about our employees. We try to give a raise of some kind every single year. Right. Uh, we care about uh, their work conditions, what they're having to do, but we also care about their families, what they're going through, and we that. And if you do that, that translates into how our employees treat our students, just like that, because we right. want them to be Ram family. And you know, and I told them at the graduation this year, is that. You know, you will forever be a part of the Ram family. And when you come back to Angelo State, it's going to be like coming home. Yeah. 
And I agree. that culture, you have to work on it all the time. It can't be something that you, that you just say. It has to be part of your action, part of your part of what you do as a as administrator, but a part of what you do as a staff person, what you do as a faculty member, what you do as a groundskeeper. All of that. It it, it we all have our eyes on those students and we and we all have our eyes on each other to try to make sure it's the best we can be. Right. And so that that's just that's just where we are. You know, uh, a couple of new things that we're building here on campus that are non-academic, so to speak. Uh, one of them is a new museum, and uh, it's going to hold the West Texas Collection so we can move the West Texas Collection out of the University Center into a museum where it has a lot more access. And on top of that museum, we're going to have some art studios. It'll be the first time ever that our art department has their own place to display their creative endeavors of all kinds. It'll be something that the, that the community can use. And finally, another thing that we had uh, money donated for, that was also privately funded, the museum, but the other, by the Richard and B.J. Meyer. But Stephen, Pollyanna Stevens gave $2 million that we're building a new chapel on campus. And that's already under construction and should be done later this fall but it'll give it, our students and employees a place for time of reflection or whatever. But uh, I was asked one morning to, to pray with a uh, groundskeeper. And, you know, he told me then that, you know, we need a place like this, Dr. May. And uh, we have such great supporters around town. They helped me out. Wow. That is awesome. That, that is so good. And we know that you care about the university. It's all, it, it's, you're, I think, I'm not sure if you have red blood or blue blood because of the Rams, <laughs> the Rams but uh, I'll tell you what, as, a, as an alumni, 85, 1985, when I come back, you're still just, you're, I mean, you're such a great guy. I don't feel like that I, I'm just an outsider when I go back there. And I was just some snotty-nosed kid, you know, from Dallas that, that came in and graduated and came back. And, and you still make me feel – really special which i do really really appreciate uh but, but i mean I, and that's how you treat everybody i know that and my last question is i need to respect your time but you know i can't watch the ram football games on tv but i can listen to them and will you be in the broadcast booth again this year uh, well you never know sometimes I, <laughs> sometimes I, I i get a chance to go up there and uh work with jeremy bryant who is excellent but this year we're going to have a better streaming platform so you should be able to watch the picture and hear jeremy bryant but uh every once in a while he lets me do that and uh but it's kind of fun but uh I, the rams are going to be they're going to surprise some folks this year they they've got it put together Good. I said one of my best moments of Angelo State University was me listening to the playoff game. I can't remember which one it was, but it was a playoff game, and I'm listening. I'm going down the road, I-35, and I'll never forget where I was. And they, the opposing team was on like the two-yard line, getting ready to score in the last few minutes, and for some reason they didn't do it. And I could hear you in the background, and I know you're just jumping up and down. You're so excited, and you could barely hear what was going on. And and it was just because I, I know you real well, and you're such a great guy, and you you carry the enthusiasm. But with that, it was just man. I just I had to pull off on the side of the road, and my wife's going, "What happened? You know what what what?" And I go, "Man, Doctor May. I mean, they didn't. They got in the playoffs. They went to the next level." Because of that play, and I said, "Dr. May is just so excited. I can't, I can't help it. I had to text you, and of course, you didn't text me back for about an hour, but you did text me back, and uh, you know, said, "Man, it's well, so exciting." I almost vapor locked. It was, it was quite, <laughs> it was quite a deal. But, That's uh, great. It was a good time. But thank you for having me, Jay. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on. And I think go to the Angelo State University Ram website, learn more. It's a great college, and I'm, I'll tell you what. I mean. The, the least amount of money you pay these days for college is important because it is so it is so expensive and your return on investment for going to a smaller school and getting out in two to three years 
living in the ramp culture because people that are there love San Angelo. I've never had a day when I go back that I don't love it. And I, I hope to be out. I come out four times a year for meetings, uh, but I, I like to come out and see people and talk to people. And it's just such a great culture. And, and uh, But Dr. May, you've done a great job. Thank you very much for being there, for being on the show, but also being there at Angelo State. We appreciate you. And God bless the um, God bless America and God bless the Rams. Go Rams. Well, thank you very much, but I want you to know I, I didn't do it by myself. I, there's some people sitting in this room right now and uh, as well as across this campus. It was a team effort, but thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much and uh, appreciate you and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.